Until much later, they absorbed me infinitely less than my personal affairs. Most of the time I worked. In the early morning, the sun threw my shadow westward as I hurried down the white chasms of Lower New York to the Property Trust. I knew the other clerks and young bond salesmen by their first names, and lunched with them in dark, crowded restaurants on little pig sausages and mashed potatoes and coffee. I even had a short affair with a girl who lived in Jersey City and worked in the accounting department. But her brother began throwing mean looks in my direction, so when she went on her vacation in July, I let it blow quietly away. I took dinner usually at the Yale Club. For some reason, it was the gloomiest event of my day, and then I went upstairs to the library and studied investments and securities for a conscientious hour. There were generally a few writers around, but they never came into the library, so it was a good place to work. After that, if the night was mellow, I strolled down Madison Avenue, past the old Murray Hill Hotel, and over 33rd Street to the Pennsylvania Station. I began to like New York, the racy, adventurous feel of it at night, and the satisfaction that the constant flicker of men and women and machines gives to the restless eye. I like to walk up Fifth Avenue and pick up, pick out romantic women from the crowd in them, and imagine that in a few minutes I was going to enter into their lives, and no one would ever know or disapprove. Sometimes, in my mind, I followed them to their apartments on the corners of hidden streets, and they turned and smiled back at me before they faded through a door into a warm darkness. At the enchanted metropolitan twilight, I felt a haunting loneliness sometimes, and felt it in others. Poor young clerks who loitered in front of windows waiting until it was time for a solitary restaurant dinner. Young clerks in the dusk, wasting the most poignant moments of night in life.